Fourth grade lesson 4.2 is remainders. But, uh, and you notice I skipped to lesson 4.1. I'm gonna do a quick review of division, um, what division is, and then I will tie that into lesson 4.2 remainders. So I'm just kind of scrunching some things together. Rather than do the estimation, I just wanna give a few moments of refresher course on division and then delve into 4.2 and what happens when we have remainders. So there's where we're gonna go from here. So division is what is used when we're looking to share something equally. If I have $14 and I wanna share it equally between two people, then that will tell the quotient. The quotient is the answer to a division problem. It looks like this, quotient. We remember product is the answer to a multiplication problem, quotient is the answer to a division problem. And so um, the quotient would be how much each of those two people would get. So division is about sharing equally. Anytime something's being split up equally or shared equally and split apart, then we're using division as long as it's being done fairly, okay? So if I have $14 and I need to share it equally amongst two people, each of those people, and if you know your multiplication facts well, this is kind of easy. Each of those people will get $7. How did I know that? Because two times seven is 14, or seven times two is 14. So what you're gonna start noticing is that division is the inverse or the opposite of multiplication. It's the undoing of a multiplication. So if I have 14 and I need to split it equally between two people, then each of those two people would get seven. If two people had $7 and you put that together, it would be $14. So just recall that division is the inverse of multiplication, the opposite of multiplication, and you can use your math facts to help you with that. You can use the grids if you don't have your multiplication facts memorized to help you with all numbers through nine, but if you have them memorized, this becomes even easier. All right, so there is my very, very fast review about division. We'll be using that skill a lot, and we're gonna tack onto that understanding of remainders. Let's get started. Okay, our essential question is, how can you use models to divide whole numbers that do not divide evenly? Andrea and two friends, bear in mind Andrea is one of those two, those people, so we have Andrea as one person and two more friends, that's three people, right? Are playing a game of dominoes. There are 28 dominoes in the set. Andrea wants each player to receive the same number of dominoes. Can she divide them equally among three players? Why or why not? And so if we are splitting something equally and we're splitting these dominoes equally, hopefully we can split them equally is what they're trying to find out then we're using division. Division is splitting things equally. And so when I'm trying to figure out what, I'm, what type of division I'm doing or what the numbers are, I always start with what's being split apart. And clearly I'm not splitting people apart. That could get messy. I'm splitting dominoes apart, right? So I always start with what's being split apart. Dominoes are, and there's 28 of them. 28 of them. So there's 28 dominoes, and I need to split those 28 dominoes evenly out between three people. So that's how you set up a division problem, is what's being split up is the first number, and into how many pieces is that being split up? In this case, we're splitting it amongst the three friends, Andrea and the two friends. Okay, so here's my division problem, 28 divided by or split into three equal parts. Okay, and we're going to use a model. We're going to get 28 little dots out. We can draw those dots on our desk if we don't have dots handy. Okay, there's 28 dots here, and then I'm going to start handing them out. I have these three circles here. One circle represents one friend, another friend, and another friend, the three that we're dividing it into. And I'm going to slide these over, one for you, one for you, one for you, and then again, again, and again. And so I'm pretending to slide all those in. I'll show you how they turn out. 
And that's how it turned out. If we wanted everybody to get an even amount, uh, they got three, six, nine each. Andrea got nine, one friend got nine, and the other friend got nine. And then, uh, so that's the division part, but then this one was left over. Dominoes are like a hard uh, ceramic or hard plastic thing. I can't just cut it three piece, into three pieces and then say, here's a little bit of it in this circumstance. I can't. So um, I have one left over. So leftovers are what remainders are. Remainders are leftovers. And we have to decide what are we talking, we have to know what we're talking about. What was the item that was left over? It's one domino. And so what do I do with that? Am I going to saw it up into three pieces and give each person a part of it? Or am I just going to leave it out and say, hey, everybody gets nine and we just won't even use that one off to the side. So it just always depends on what it is as to what you're going to do with the remainder. We're not going to saw it up, right? So they say, find the number of counters in each group and the number of counters left over. Nine in each group. And we had one counter left over. So 28 divided by three is nine with a remainder of one. One remaining, one left over. And that's how we answer that. Here's a picture of dominoes in case you weren't entirely sure what a domino was. That's a domino. How many dominoes did each player receive in that? Remember, they, we had 28 and they were sharing it equally amongst three people. And we ended up, when we handed them out, there was nine for each person. And then there was one left over that nobody's going to get. So we, how many dominoes does each player receive? They each received nine. And they're all happy. Nobody got more than anybody else. Everybody's happy. How many dominoes are left over? One left over. One remainder. We'll put that word there just so that our brains get used to it. A leftover is a remainder. Explain how the model helped you find the number of dominoes each player receives. Well, it did help us to see that, that it was being passed out. So we could see... We could see that 28 was passed out evenly to three people. We could see that happening, and it was all passed out. Why is one counter left outside of the equal groups? It, it would make one person, if we had put that one counter in one person's circle, then the other two would be like, hey, why'd you get more than me? And then you'd have a problem. So we left it out, right? So now they ask us this question in a little bit of a twist. Let's see if we can make our connection here. Use counters to represent a set of 28 dominoes. How many players can play dominoes if each player is going to receive nine dominoes? Will any dominoes be left over? Explain. And if we need to see it, we can draw it. Some of you might be going, um, I know this. I know this because we kind of just did it. But if not, let's, let's draw it so your brain can see it. Okay, and so when I drew these, I drew them in rows of nine. So there's nine because they said everybody's getting nine dominoes. So there's nine, and then nine times two, another second row, is 18. And then nine times three, since I'm adding a third row, is 27. And that's why I put 27 here, with one left over is 28. So we could have one player, two player, three players. Looks familiar, right? We can have three players but there will be one unused domino because it, we can't give it to one person. We said we wanted to be fair. Okay, let's have a look at this make connections. When a number cannot be divided evenly, the amount left over is called the remainder, the leftover amount. They say to use the counters to find 39 divided by five. And I'm gonna, this, I'm gonna tie in a little bit about lesson 4.1 here. Um, on the estimating, right? 39 divided by five. If your multiplication facts are solid and you said, hmm, 39 is nearly 40. 40 split five ways, or five times something equals 40, is eight. So my answer probably is gonna be fairly close to eight because 39 is pretty close to 40. Okay, so that's what lesson 4.1 was talking about, is just that estimating part of it. Knowing your math facts helps you with that. 
they want us to use 39 counters and share those counters equally among five groups, one, two, three, four, five. The number of counters left over is the remainder. So we're gonna find out how many each person gets and they are going to get an even amount. That's the whole point of division, fairness, even amount. So we would go ahead and get our counters and start putting them in there, passing them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 36, 37, 38, 39. Oh no, I did all 39. But look what happened. This one has six, seven, eight. He has eight, he has eight, he has eight, and he does not, he has seven. And he's over here crying, of course, like, hey, why'd you all get more than me? That's not fair. So let's pull these four, one, two, three, four, back. Because not all of them, let me erase that, that's not supposed to be on that line there. Not all of them got the same amount. We want to keep it fair. So now this guy has seven, this guy has seven, 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 and seven. That's all a equal amount. 39 divided by five. The quotient is seven. They all got seven. And the remainder is four. We had to pull some of those away from them so that we didn't have anybody crying. And the way that's set up is seven R for remainder four. That's how we would write the answer. 39 divided by five is seven with a remainder R four. Okay, we're gonna do several practices together to help you get comfortable with division. Uh, usually at first division feels like this monster, like I don't know, but after practice it starts to fall into place like, oh, okay, I get what's going on. Just like everything else has been this year. At first it seemed struggle and then it all clicked into place and you've been doing a great job. Okay, let's start with number one. This is 10 of something being shared three ways. So let's use the uh, counters or the, the model to help our brains adapt to what's going on with division. It helps your brain out. So we're going to draw 10 things, 10 counters. And we're going to split those 10 counters or we're going to pass them out, share them in three equal ways. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and oh no, I, I can't give that to one of the people and not the other two, they'll get mad. So when I split 10 into three equal parts, everybody got three and there was a remainder, a leftover remainder of one. That's how that looks. Let's look at another one. And you can, if you're feeling it at the stage where you feel like, I'm going to try pausing it, I'm going to try and see if I can get that answer. Go ahead and pause it and try to see if you can get what the answer should be and then play when you've got it or when you've gotten uh, stuck. I'm going to draw 28. Now, normally, as we go further in division, we don't have to draw them out. I, we will get to the point where we do the algorithms that make it work. But for now, we're just teaching our brain what's division and why are there leftovers. So we're helping our brain see things. So we're going to have 28 counters and we're gonna split them into five equal pieces. Okay, here we go. I've got the 28 drawn here. I've got the five equal pieces. I'm gonna use a blue color to show the movement and then cross off as I go like I did the last one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. And um, there's three left over. I can't split three uh, across these five. So those are just gonna be leftovers. So how many did each one get when we split them into five pieces? 
each one got five. So our answer is five. And we had a remainder that we couldn't share equally of three. I hope this is starting to make sense to you. If so, try this one and then push play once you've got it. I'm gonna draw my 15, this is 15 of something, being shared equally divided by six. So it's being shared equally among six groups. So I'm gonna draw my counters and my six groups. And let's go ahead and pass those out. Here are my 15 representing that. And they're gonna be split up or divided into six equal groups. Here I go. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 9, 10, 11, 12, and mm, there's only three left, and I need to have six left to go evenly. So I'm going to stop there so that nobody gets upset. And if I take 15 and split it into six equal groups, to keep it even, everybody will get two, and there's a remainder of three left over that I didn't even pass out because I didn't want to upset anybody. So 15 divided by 6 will be 2 with a remainder of 3, 3 left over. Okay, try that one. Okay, this is 11 being split equally into 3 groups. 11 being split equally into 3 groups. So let's do it. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 7, 8, 9, and oh, there's 2 left. And I can't get two split across three people. So I'll stop there. Everybody got three. And then there were two left over that I did not try to split up. Okay, we're going to try a few more. And I want you to notice over here they do something differently. When we get to that one, I'll talk to you about that one. And you, you maybe remember that from last year. But if not, I'll help you understand that one. We have 29 being divided up or split up equally into four groups. There's my 29 counters. Here's my four groups, and I will count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Nine, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16. 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and one left over that won't get passed out. So each of these got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And seven times four, you guys, you know that seven times four is 28. So I'm gonna start pointing that detail out to you. Seven times four is 28. That got me super duper close with one left over. You getting that? So we had seven remainder one. How division is how close? If I count by this number, how close can I get without going over? Okay, let's look at this one. This is 34 times five. Let's take that route. Instead of drawing 34 counters, let's take that route. If I count by five, how close can I get to 34 without spilling over? So let's count. Five, I'll, I'll use a counter to represent each five count. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Oopsie, 35 is higher than that. Stop, 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 right? Let's erase that 35 one. I can count to 30, and then I spill over. That took me six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. And how many were left to get to 30 after that? Four, or to get to 34 after that. So we're at 30, one, two, three, four, remainder four. Now let's do it with the model. I'm just trying to bridge a gap for the next part. I want to bridge that gap. So we're going to go ahead and do it with the model. I'm going to draw 34, and I'm going to split it into five groups so your brain can see the relationship between what I just did and how it got us the same answer. Okay, here I go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and I had four left over. How many are in each of these? One, one, two, three, four, five, six. There is six, 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 which is six times five, right? That gave us 30. So each of them got six, and there were four left over, remainder four. So hopefully that's starting to make sense on that relationship. We'll kind of do this the same way so that your brain can start making this connection. If I have 25 counters and I want to spread them equally amongst three, uh, divide by three, then um, I will draw out the counters and find out how many everybody gets and how many are left over. Now remember, division is simply if I count by three, how close can I get to 25 without going over? So I know that three times eight is 24, right? Three times eight is 24. That's super close. Three times nine is 27. That's spilled over, oopsie, that's too much. So three times eight is 24. One more, one extra would get me to 25. So our answer should be eight because eight times three is 24. That's as close as we can get by counting by threes with one left over. Okay, now let's do it with a model so that our brains are making those connections. I'm starting with 25 and splitting it into three equal groups. And here I go, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and one left over. How many are in there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight here, eight. Everyone gets eight. There's a remainder of one left. And eight, three times over, gives us 24, right? 24 with one left over, 25. So hopefully your, your brain is starting to connect like, oh, I think I see it. Okay. Here, this is no different than this, so don't worry. It's just another way of writing it. There's a couple of ways to write division that you'll learn over the, couple, the next couple of years. These are two ways, this way and this symbol. This one, though, this is 20. Whatever's inside of the, the house, some people call that the house, whatever's inside of the house, that's the item that's being shared out. So... This would be worded, uh, written like this in the other way. It's the 20 items that's being split apart. And how many parts is it being split into? It's being split into seven groups. 20 being split into seven groups. So what sits on the outside of the house is how many people are trying to share that, whatever's inside, okay? So if you keep that in mind, this is always the amount that's being shared. Okay, so shared amount. How many groups? If I count by seven, how close can I get to 20 without spilling over? Seven times two is 14. That's still underneath 20. Seven times three is 21. Oh no, that spilled over. So the most I can do is two each with some a lot left over, a lot of left over, a lot of remainder. Let's look at it happen. Okay, I've got 20 there, and I'm sharing it amongst seven groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And look at, I can't hand those out. There's one, two, three, four, five, six left. If I hand those out, this guy's gonna cry. So I have two for everybody with six left over that I didn't pass out, remainder six. I hope this is starting to make sense to you. And remember I had mentioned uh, seven times two is 14. You add those six left over, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, that got you there. That's the relationship between the multiplication and division.
Okay, we'll try these final two, and then I think you're probably ready to do this on Think Central on your own. So we have 35 being of uh, 35 of something that's going to be split up into four groups. Remember, whatever goes inside the house is the item that is going to be handed out. And outside the house, into how many groups are we going to put that? So it could be rewritten, just so that your brain's making the connection. It could be written, there are 35 things, and I'm going to split them into four equal groups. Okay? All right. I will draw out my, well, actually, before that, that connection I'm helping you make. Let's use our multiplication facts. I, and if you don't know have your multiplication facts memorized, use your grid, go down the four row, and go down until you can get as close to 35 as possible without going over. Well, I know that 4 times 8 is 32. That's close. 4 times 9 is 36. Oh, no, that's too high. So I'm going to see that 4 times 8 is 32. So everybody should get 8. And that gets me to 32. So to get to 35, I need 33, 34, 35. I need 3 more. I should get a remainder of 3. Okay, now let's make sure our brains connect to that. So we're going to draw out our 35 and uh, our four groups. And here I'll go to hand them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I almost forgot somebody. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. And there's three left over. I need four to make them equal, so I'm just going to leave those three left over. Each of these have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight here, eight here, eight here, eight here, right? Eight times four, which is 32 with three more left over to give me 35. I have an eight, remainder three. Last one we'll do, a 23 divided by eight. Well, I know that eight times three is 24. That's too high. It's oh, super close though, right? It's just barely too high. Eight times two is 16. And then how much more from 16 to 23? 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. There's seven more. So my answer, eight times two is 16 with a remainder of seven. I'm showing you that because I know you're pretty much done with drawing dots, right? Okay, you, you won't have to draw dots for the rest of your life on division. Just this lesson trying to help our brains out. I'm gonna draw my 23 dots and my eight groups. And now I will pass those out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then there's four, five, six, seven left. Those aren't enough to give everybody one. So I'm gonna leave those as the remainder left over seven. Everybody got two. And then we left the seven over. There just wasn't enough. That's it. Go ahead and tackle this one on Think Central, and I'm sure you'll do very well. Good luck.